We've all seen prices climb and climb over the last 10 years in real estate, and especially over the last two years since the onset of COVID. Up until recently, pricing almost didn't matter. Want to list your house for 50,000 more than your neighbor? Sure, why not? Well, the rubber has hit the road. Increasing interest rates have caused the amount of homes sold to decrease by about seven to 10% so far this year over last. So for the first time in a long time, how a seller prices their home absolutely matters. Let's look at the three options sellers have when pricing their home for sale. The first option, underpricing the home. This isn't typically used in Southern California very often, but sometimes a homeowner may assume that they can cause a bidding war in which the price of the home is brought up significantly by the competition to buy it. While that may be possible, it's also very likely that a buyer can tell that it's undervalued and assume that there must be something wrong with the home and that's why it's priced the way it is. Ultimately, listing low will likely result in a faster sale, but it almost guarantees that the seller is leaving some money on the table using this approach. Option number two, overpricing the home. Sometimes sellers will tell me, I don't have to sell, or let's list high so it leaves us room to negotiate down to what we really expect for the home. As much as these might seem like logical ideas initially, they just don't work in the well-informed real estate world, where consumers have several apps on their phones where they search for property regularly. This higher price will deter most buyers because they can compare this overpriced home to all the other ones that are not. In turn, the home will sit on the market, becoming what I call a stagnant listing, in that the public knows once something has been on the market for two or three months, that there's either something wrong with the house or it's simply overpriced for the home to actually sell. That results in chasing the market down with price reductions, and that's also a circumstance where buyers can smell blood in the water and likely wait to write an even lower offer down the road. Overpricing, in my opinion, has always been the riskiest route a home seller can take and almost always results in the sale taking much longer and likely taking less for the home than what I'm going to offer as the third option. That third option, you guessed it, pricing the home at market value. This sounds like a no brainer, but using the most recent comparable sales and pricing your home to match what is happening in the market right now is by far the smartest approach a seller can take when pricing their home for sale. Remember the savvy buyer that I mentioned that had all the apps on their phone? They know a well-priced house when they see one. Using the strongest and most recent sales to set your list price is the very best tactic when pricing your home. It has a better chance of creating a bidding war, increasing the likelihood of getting an offer at or even above your list price, and likely results in the quickest sale you can have. That's a win, 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 all the way across. As our market adjusts, be sure to consider these three options when thinking about the value of your home. Better yet, call me and we can discuss them together. Thanks.